So in this segment, we're going to be discussing Boris Johnson's nonsensical statements on the Northern Ireland Protocol, um, him admitting that the deal he negotiated was bad and it caused a lot of problems. Uh, I'm going to split this into two different videos because he talks absolutely, you know, I I've never seen a man who can make, he can talk nine minutes of absolute nonsense. This this might be one of the few men in the world that could do it, him and Donald Trump, at least in terms of politicians. But let's, let's cut into the video. Remember the, the circumstances in which we had to do that deal under the terms of the Ben Burt Act, or as it was called, the so-called Surrender Act, we couldn't leave unless we agreed to the EU's terms. And there was no That's not true. We couldn't leave on no deal. It wasn't down to the EU's terms. It was based around no deal. ...that we faced a particular problem in Ireland, where we, t we were told that we faced a, a choice. If the, if the UK wanted to come out of the customs union and the EU internal market, and if we wanted to keep an open border across the island of Ireland, which we emphatically did for the sake of peace on the island and the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, then we would have to make sure that we somehow checked on goods that might go from Great Britain to Northern Ireland and then on into Ireland. And that is what the protocol does. And purely to help the EU, we agreed to check on uh, those goods uh, entering Northern Ireland, as I say, that might go on to Ireland and I thought those checks would not be onerous since yeah it, it kind of it, it's important to state here that it wasn't just the UK doing the, the EU a favor it was the EU doing us a favor because they're British border officials checking the goods going from GB to NI not EU officials um, and those goods there's chances that it could go into the EU single market hence the checks um, so the, the whole argument he's making is that we're do we did the EU a favor is nonsense um, there isn't actually he wouldn't have got his brexit deal without having that you know none of this he would not have got brexit done without the northern ireland protocol we should remember that do that much stuff that falls into that category most of the goods stay in northern ireland and it's all, it's all my fault I, 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 i'm fully exceptional and the there, there it is you know um he accepts that the fact that it was it was his fault that the deal he signed was garbage and that's why he's always argued about implementation, um, interpretation, all that kind of stuff. He never admitted the deal was junk before this moment. And so this is on him. And I'm glad that he's admitted that it was his fault of what happened. He does make a load of excuses. He's like one of those combat fighters is like, I'm not going to make an excuse, but oh, I had a bad training camp, etc. You know, he does this, um, but at least he's admitted it, which is the main thing. And the protocol itself, and this is why I signed it, contains lots of reassuring phrases about how Northern Ireland remains in the customs territory of the UK and will benefit from participation in the United Kingdom's independent trade policy. The protocol notes the importance of maintaining the integral part, place of Northern Ireland in the United Kingdom's internal market. But beneath the paint and plaster, there was the cold steel reality of EU control. And the Commission was in charge and not the UK. And that's the deal you sign, Chief. You know, and he's arguing about like, oh, in the specific details, these are the problems, etc. But this is the agreement you said was a great agreement. So either you didn't read the agreement properly, especially when you told people there would be no checks in the Irish Sea. If anyone tells you to do any paperwork, send it to him, and he'll chuck it in the bin. Johnson, I mean, um, unless you didn't read your agreement properly, the only other conclusion we can come to is you lied. And I don't know which one you want to agree to, Chief, um, because he does argue about interpretation and that kind of stuff. But that's nonsense. And contrary to my hopes, there they did not apply it sensibly. We had that m the mad ban on sausages and potted plants and tractors, and heaven knows what, and people unable to send parcels to their grandchildren. We had very serious diversion of trade. And, you know, that's some of the things that Rishi Sunak's actually fixed here with the sausages and that kind of stuff. The EU does not allow chilled meat to come in from third countries. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why there was a sausage ban, but there was a, a grace period for that, for the UK to try and figure things out here, but we didn't, and we unilaterally extended it. So again, that was on us. We knew there was going to be a ban on chilled meat. We knew that was going to happen. So for us to argue, oh, it's crazy that this happened, we knew that from the jump because there was a grace period that allowed it. So this stuff here he's talking about is absolute nonsense. As British retailers couldn't move goods like shortbread from one, country, uh, from one part of the country uh, to the other, even if they didn't actually have stores in uh, in Ireland itself. Surely that's something you could have had a carve out for if a shop has only a shop within the United Kingdom and not a shop within Northern Ireland, I mean, not a shop within Ireland, you know, a branch, then they could be excluded from the more onerous checks of the 
Northern Ireland Protocol, but you didn't negotiate that, Chief. Why is that? Surely, if it was such common sense, which it is, why couldn't you get a carve out for that in your great deal? And of course, these everyday frustrations were particularly acute for unionist communities in Northern Ireland who felt they were being cut off from the rest of the UK, which I, which I bitterly regretted and I felt was absurd because the large majority of Northern Ireland trade is with the rest of the UK. And the problem I had was that there was nothing legally that the UK government could do because we'd given that power away. And that is why we had the bill. He talks about the Northern Ireland Protocol bill here, but surely, you know, you should have known you've given away certain amounts of power, you know, in terms of interpretation, surely you get it down to what specific things are going to be checked, etc. You know, you have good lawyers, or at least I would hope you have lawyers involved here, um, you know, to deal with this stuff. It's just absolute nonsense what he's arguing here. The whole point was to renege on the deal on the Northern Ireland Protocol. That's why he created the Northern Ireland Protocol bill to either force the EU to renegotiate the Northern Ireland Protocol or just to get rid of it unilaterally. That was the plan from the jump. You know, that's what he told certain members of the DUP. That's what he told certain MPs, hence why they voted for it at the time. So this, this setup, this framing here is absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. He signed a deal which he didn't like in order to get Brexit done, in order to win a general election and take us out of the EU. And then his plan was to renege on the Northern Ireland Protocol in order to take Northern Ireland out of the single market for goods. That was the plan. And, you know, the framing here is absolutely abysmal because he's painting himself as the victim when Brexit was his plan from the beginning. He can blame Theresa May and blame anyone else. But at the end of the day, he negotiated the deal. Him and Frost negotiated the deal. And the simple fact is they negotiated a crappy deal and they know it and they know it and their plans to renege on the deal didn't work because of Johnson's own stupidity around Partygate and amongst other things around the cost of living crisis they got rid of him and so he never had the chance to implement his 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 plan in the first place um, but you know the statements he's making here are bizarre to fix it and to sort it out and, and we, that's why I believe we had that majority of 80 seats because I think the people of this country sensed that we needed to fix it and this is nonsense because you got the majority to get Brexit done and the withdrawal agreement included the Northern Ireland Protocol. So if anything, your, withdraw your Northern Ireland Protocol bill um, goes against the majority you were given back in 2019. So this, this it's just absolutely bizarre. That bill does fix, it, it's still in, the, in Parliament, it does fix all these problems. It removes any border checks down the Irish Sea. It would allow the, the UK to determine VAT rules in VAT rules in Northern Ireland, uh, state aid, subsidies, and so on. And above all, it would allow Northern Irish firms to make goods and of any kind, put them on the market in Northern Ireland if they conform to UK standards and not EU standards. So a dual standard regime was envis envisaged. By who, though? By you, obviously. A dual stand, you know, this, this idea of a dual regulation thing makes no sense, because if those goods are going to um, Ireland, there's no incentive for the companies to adhere to EU rules because they know there'll be no checks, there'll be no standards checks. It, it makes no sense. The whole dual regulatory theme made no sense because either all the firms that want to export to the EU and also to um, to Great Britain, for example, would have to adhere to EU rules and would have to prove they've adhered to EU rules. There would have to be standards checks. You can't do standard checks on the island of Ireland because of the nature of the Good Friday Agreement. So it just caused further headaches because at some point there will be companies that are sending goods into Ireland that don't meet EU standards and then you get more and more problems. So the idea of a dual regulatory um, body or system just didn't make any sense from the first place. The EU were never going to accept it and you'd have had the end of the protocol. You'd have had a trade war. And I don't believe for one moment that it would have necessitated checks north-south, certainly not by the UK. We would not have done anything of the kind. It would have kept and respect it's nonsense you know the EU, he, that's the plan it would force the eu to put up the hard border that, the that, was, oops, that was the plan you know force the eu to put up the hard border and then claim it was the eu and ireland that broke the good friday agreement that was the whole point of this um i'm going to cut the video here 
and what we'll do is we'll talk about the rest of the nonsense in the video just because I don't want it to drag on too long because we've been going near the 10 minute mark and um, there's only so much Boris Johnson that people can handle um, but anyways let me know what you think in the comments like comment share subscribe I'll have this one come out at the morning the the early slot and the second half of the video come out the later slot and um, if people want it I'll combine them together and make a big video but anyways let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on Patreon if you can and hopefully I'll see you in the next one